we have we have quite a few strains of different microorganisms. We deal with the immune system, but this is really what we what we were looking at when we tested on our birds down there. Now we don't have big flocks. We'll buy groups of birds, and so we were testing for meat. We were testing for eggs, and then when we because of this scanner, we could test the manure. We could test the feathers. We could test the egg shells, and what we found, we thought. When we got our first eggs back, and man, these were good, nice, hard shells. We thought, they're thicker. Man, they're going to be way thicker. They were not thicker. Actually, they were. They were thicker, just a little bit. 13 to 14. Yep. So you had 8% difference, almost 7.5% difference in shell thickness. And that can account for two or three times the shell strength. Was that a really young bird? Yeah, they were, they were less than a year old. Yeah, but when we... A year in production or a year old? A year old. Okay. okay, so what we decided, well, they're not thicker, the, the mineral ratios are gonna be different. Mike, were the mineral ratios different? They were exactly the same. They were exactly the same. So we said, huh, I wonder what's going on. What we finally figured out was the eggshell is being glued together, bonded very differently. Because the microbes and the minerals were working together to bond that shell. And that's what's going on. That's the difference and that's how it happens. Then we started measuring the mineral content in the yolk. We started measuring the mineral content in the albium, the white. And then we thought, wow, they're higher. We are getting more minerals through into the grain or out of the grain into the egg versus out in the manure. So we thought, well, let's run up and get a bunch of eggs out of the store. Every one of them, softer shells, runnier uh, whites. We didn't have the color in the yolk. So as we started comparing, then we started checking the bird feathers. And what we found is the mineral content coming out in the bird feathers was extremely high. So we knew that we were getting that digestion and getting that transfer rather than just moving it out and migrating it into the manure. And that was the that was the whole purpose of the biology. That's what it's supposed to do is utilize that nutrition that we put into it and get it into our product. Now this is this desert dynamon that we use. It's actually an ancient seabed deposit. So everything that got leached out of the ground got put in here, got settled down and this stuff we we dig it up. It's all natural, we micronize it so that the particles get down to be way more utilizable, usable in size. It's got loads and loads and loads of trace minerals. And the reason that we're doing this is because we don't get the mineral content in our grains like we used to. For the last 125 years that they've been monitoring this, our crops are sliding in nutrient content. Because when you farm strictly NPK, what am I never putting back, Ed? The trays out the copper and the zinc and the manganese. All of these trace elements don't ever go back in. Now, every time I grow something, I promise you, you're taking them out. So, all of your B vitamins, from B1 up to B12, they're all cobalt based. Now, how many of you guys have heard of cobalt? You won't get vitamin B12 without cobalt, unless you buy some synthetic version of it that isn't gonna work, okay? Cobalt is the enzyme that activate, cobalt is the mineral that activates the enzymes that produce all of your B vitamins. We don't live without B vitamins. 
So, when we look at a soil test, we find that cobalt is universally almost non-existent. Most soil tests you will have one one hundredth of the minimum of cobalt. You'll have a fraction of your molybdenum. You're not going to make protein compounds, amino acids and proteins adequately without molybdenum because molybdenum is the mineral that runs the enzymes that start to form your protein content. It changes your nitrogen from an elemental or a fertilizer source into amino acids on into proteins. So if you don't have these minerals, the enzymes that put all these wonderful compounds together don't work. And you can also have incomplete proteins. Okay, and we're going to talk about that. So it's absolutely critical that these mineral components are in the soil, that the plants utilize them so that the grains, whether it's barley or wheat or oats or corn or soy or whatever we're using, has the mineral in the seed because then this chicken and its microbes are going to rely on that mineral ratio, that mineral content, to make all of these components. And what I'm going to tell you guys, you might think is a little bit far-fetched, but one day, and I hope it's very soon, food will be graded on its mineral and nutritional content and not on a label. That technology is coming. It is very close. These scanners are becoming more and more and more common. And the consuming public is becoming more and more aware that what we have been doing on bulk cheap food is slowly killing the population. Is that catching on in, in any other country yet? Yeah, there's a lot of countries that say absolutely no more of glyphosate, no more genetically modified organisms because they have to deal and their governments in those countries have to deal with the disease among the people. And so it's a major, major problem. And so when we look at these things, you look at the escalating diseases in our human population, this is not sustainable. What the mass, the large portion of our population eats is slowly, slowly killing it. When you have cancer in men at almost two to one, cancer in women at almost three to one, and it's gonna keep getting closer and closer, okay? Right now you have autism that is approaching one in 30. It used to be one in thousands and hundreds of thousands. By 2025, if we just keep doing what we're doing, one in two babies will be autistic. You tell me how we run a society in that situation. Can't exist. You don't have the workforce to care for them and you don't have the workforce to replace them. Absolutely. I mean, there are forces behind this and, and as diabolical and evil as it is, is we still have the ability to change that. Because our health is based on mineral content and nutritional content and good gut microflora. Everything else is simply a band-aid on the Titanic trying to keep a boat that likes to hit icebergs afloat. And we're trying to change that equation. This is how we do it. Because one is, there will be a way to survive this. And two, there will be a market for this. And, and so between the vaccines, the environmental toxins, the lack of nutrition, and you know, this is what we're ending up with. 